so like Ben said, my name is Jewel. I'm the product manager for storytelling at Tableau. It's my fourth tapestry, and I'm going to start this thing off by um, telling you about my favorite band. So I really love this band, King Gizzard and Blizzard Wizard. They're a seven-piece psych rock band from Australia. And what I love about them is they released three albums last year and have five coming this year of new material. They're incredibly prolific. And the reason they're so prolific is because they give themselves these limitations on what they can do in an album. So their most recent one that actually just came out last Friday and is excellent, check it out. It's called a uh, Flying Microtonal Banana. And the restriction they put on themselves is they all had to play microtonal tuned instruments. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's very complicated. I had a very long discussion with my drummer about what this means. He made me watch a 30 minute YouTube video about it. I'm not gonna do that to you. But before that, they did one that they had an album that looped infinitely. So they had one kind of musical idea going through the whole thing. Before that, they had an album that had four songs of exactly the same length of 10 minutes and 30 seconds that took up four quarters of an LP. So as Pitchfork aptly put it, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are a testament to the liberating power of giving yourself restrictions. And I really like thinking about that, you know, as I was listening to this new album when it came out on Friday, because recently I've been thinking a lot about the tools we use and what they mean for what we make. So now that I am the product manager for storytelling, I'm thinking a lot about how the tools I've used affected me and how do I build better tools to help people tell better stories. So data storytelling is still pretty new and there's a lot of people out there that just don't know how to do it. So what can we do to help fix bad stories? So my friend Eric, uh, he's not a super chatty guy and he was telling me a strategy he has when he tells a story and it doesn't land, like it's the end of the story and it just wasn't climactic enough he'll just add, oh, and then I found 20 bucks. <laughs> because everyone likes a good finding money story. So that's a strategy we could use. Might be a weird one to build into Tableau. Um, so instead, I'm trying to think about what kind of guidance can we put in the tools to help people tell better stories. And one thing that's really shaped my thinking around this is that I do a project every year where I use the exact same data, well not exactly the same, but I use data um, from a radio station called KEXP. It's a very important um, radio station, not just radio station, but like community um, in Seattle and among indie musicians in general. And every year I take a look at their playlist that they keep online. I scrape the whole thing for the whole year and I look at what did they play the most and over the past couple years, the way I've approached it has changed, and a lot of that is because of the tools I used. And I found that when I gave myself more restrictions by using tools that had more restrictions, um, I was able to make a story that was more focused, and that really actually told a story, because really the first ones weren't storytelling, and I'll show you what I mean. So th that's what their playlist looks like. So the first year I did the project, I was just analyzing all the data for 2013, and I didn't really fully grok the idea of you know, narrative, prescriptive data. I didn't really know what I was trying to communicate with doing these things, because it was 2013, I had just started at Tableau. For the most part, my attitude towards data was like, ooh, look, fun data. Don't you want to play with it? I do. Doesn't that make you want to play with it? And so I created all these exploratory dashboards, and People had the same reaction, especially when I posted them on Reddit and music sites. People were like, yeah, that's cool, but what does it actually mean? What's the point? And the truth was I didn't actually know. And I had kind of tried to attempt to do some storytelling by, but I pretty much failed at the most basic structure you can give yourself when you're doing storytelling is just asking a question and then answering it. And I kind of attempted to do it by titling this What Music Matters Most, which is a play on their slogan, Where the Music Matters. And I guess you could look at the chart and say like, well, I guess Arcade Fire matters most? But maybe that was the wrong question to be asking to begin with. People weren't interested in what, was, what mattered most. They were interested in why. Why did it matter the most? And that's a question that I completely failed to answer. 
so when I revisited it um, the next year and looked at 2014 data, I really wanted to answer that question better. So I did a little more editorializing around the visits in this blog. Um, but my blog is in WordPress and the editor is like really just an open text box for you to type in it and when you have ADHD like I do, that's a recipe for disaster. So the result was just a very kind of partially coherent stream of consciousness rant about my personal taste in music and how it relates to this radio station. But I did at least add in the basic structure of answering questions, of asking questions and answering questions. So I'm like, yeah, Spoon was the number one played band of the year. Why? Because they had an album that came out. Oh, that makes sense. But in this process of writing this story and asking those questions and then answering those questions, I found another benefit than just providing a basic structure of how to communicate findings. Really, the act of telling the story made me realize what was missing from it. And what I realized is I was, I had what, which I had the first time, and then I added why, and that was helpful, but I didn't have who. Who does the music matter to? Who, why does it matter to these people? And so going through that, it made me realize that that was a piece of data that was missing. So I went back and KEXP does an end of the year um, ranking of all of the albums that came out that year. So I went and this is perfect because the ranking is ranked by listeners, so they all vote on it. And then I compared that data to how much those records were actually played. And this was so much simpler than any of those dashboards I had been making. I had, I, I think for this blog post for the 2014 one, there must have been like seven different dashboards I put in there. This is by far the simplest thing, but it's the thing that started to communicate what I was learning was the thing I really wanted to communicate the most, and which is why was KEXP so important to our music community? And when I looked at this quadrant chart that I made, you can see there's pretty much the idea that like, okay, the lower ranked things were played, lower ranked by the um, listeners were also played less, high ranked things also high, but then we have some outliers of this top quadrant here where it's lower listener rank but higher DJ plays. And you can see a lot of them ended up being um, local Seattle scene people. So people that might not be as well known to the listeners that are doing the voting, but the station is really taking a commitment and saying like, yeah, we're going to support our local scene. And then you can see the things in the bottom where it's like, yeah, these are all really important indie artists but they're well known, and that's not what KEXP is for. KEXP is for discovery and for finding things. Like, everyone knows where to find, you know, St. Vincent or Afghan wigs. So that's when I really started to think about how the tools affect what we make. And I realized that because Tableau is so great at making dashboards, this is naturally where the tool took me. So I decided I need to break out of that and not think about doing this analysis purely in Tableau anymore. So I also tried experimenting with doing story points. This is, of course, before I was working on them, so I was really mad about it. Um, <laughs> and so I tried to force myself into making story points, and what ended up happening was you get these simple, simple charts, but they tell you so much more about what is actually happening at this radio station, and you don't have to pull teeth and tell people, like, click on this thing, see if you find any in anything interesting. And so that year, lo and behold, a lot more people actually paid attention to this analysis and kind of understood what the point was. So the year after that, I decided I really wanted to go all in on focusing on storytelling and really trying to have like an actual statement I'm trying to make about this data instead of just like, here you go. So I ended up using a platform called Atavist which is a storytelling tool that you um, can use to make websites or like ebook kind of things. Um, and gives it a kind of a freestanding site, which was a bonus because whenever I tried to send these KEXP analysis things to just general music fans, they end up at my weird Tableau blog and they have no idea what's going on. So using this tool put several more restrictions on me that really helped shape the way I ended up telling the story. So the first one was I wanted this to be fully mobile compatible. And that meant I had to really, really simplify my visualizations enough for them to shrink down to a small size. So absolutely no crazy dashboards on this one. 
and without relying on the reader's personal interest to get them to interact with that dashboard and drive interac interaction on an exploratory viz, I had to make things more explanatory and really show something happening. And that actually ended up helping me a lot. I came up with a lot of good, simple charts that actually made a point about what KEXP is like and what they do. So for example, this is one that's just their top 20 most played artists. And you could see some interesting patterns in when an artist saw a lot of play. So there was one day where they just played a ton of, ca of the clash, because they declared it International Clash Day, which is now an official Seattle holiday. The second thing that really shaped how I told the story this time, and it's something that I'm honestly a little embarrassed that it took this to make me do this, but as I told you, ADHD. Uh, the tool had an idea of hierarchical structure built into it. So you could have sections, and in those sections you put blocks. And just the very idea that that existed made me think, oh, maybe I should like make an outline and like organize things into a way that makes sense. So this build into structure actually forced me to think about that. And what I ended up doing was creating sections for methodology, for what was played the most, for what is the listener taste versus the DJ taste. And it ended up being a lot more cohesive and actually having a narrative that way. So it completely fixed the problem I had of that stream of consciousness madness that WordPress encouraged for me. And the resulting story just had a lot more of a point of view and just better communicated what makes KEXP so special to me. And I tweeted that out on the Tapestry Conference hashtag if you want to see the mobile version of that. So what does this whole journey I took mean to me now as a builder of storytelling tools? So originally, when I first signed on for the role of storytelling at Tableau, a lot of where the plans already are and what the backlog was reflecting was that we really needed to add more features and just increase expressiveness because we want to allow our story authors to make stories that look really good and do whatever they want them to. But going through this process of myself and really reflecting on it and talking to a lot of the customers that I've been trying to build these tools for, we, I really realized that uh, the people responsible for doing prescriptive data visualization they have this imagination gap. They don't even know where to start telling a story. Like me, not even knowing like, hey, maybe I should make an outline of what I'm going to say. That's a piece that's missing for them. So we're trying to figure out ways to just end that kind of blank page anxiety for them and find out a way if we can structure these things better in a way that makes them think through their story a little bit more. So, I'm trying to think about where we can build in storytelling best practices, and that's now kind of my number one priority. So just the simple section, simple suggestion of having sections forced me to organize my story. So what other kinds of things can we do like that in Tableau to best encourage those best practices? I've got some ideas like how do we make it so that people are focusing more on showing data and not just telling you what your data is? How do we make sure that stories have this kind of narrative arc and structure to it? How do we make sure that it's broken down into consumable chunks so that people aren't overwhelmed with all the data they're seeing? So these are things I'm starting to think about. Obviously, there's a lot more. I'm really excited to be here with all of you because I'm sure you have a lot of ideas about it and I'd love to hear them. Another thing that I've been thinking about is to, during doing these projects, it was always very iterative, but at the same time, the data process and the storytelling process were very siloed. So I would do my data discovery, think I know what I want to start talking about, and then I start typing it, realize I don't have everything I need, go back, do the data, and going back and forth like that. As I wrote the story, more ideas for analysis came up and I'd have to go back and forth. But how can we best integrate storytelling into that data discovery process so that we don't have to do that back and forth so that the story we create, we're creating the story as we go. Because really, when you're doing data discovery, you're kind of just doing data storytelling to yourself. You're just sitting there explaining what this data means to you. Maybe that's a way we could explain it to other people too. So those are questions I still have and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that during some of our socializing times. So as we start to define 
what storytelling best practices are and start figuring out ways to incorporate them into the tools we build, I think it will really help just everyone, including people that are terrible storytellers like me, how to tell better stories faster and just communicate their data better. Because really, what's the point of seeing and understanding your data if you can't share that understanding with others? So yeah, iterating on this project every year has not only been very fun for me as a passion project, but it also taught me a lot about the tools we used and how they help us communicate. And uh, then I found 20 bucks. All right, thanks a lot, Jewel.